China's private equity ambitions are in for a big boost. According to the Wall Street Journal, China's $75 billion National Social Security Fund is now allowed to invest more freely in local private equity. Let's take a look at the implications of the story with Darius Kowalczyk. He is Chief Investment Strategist with CFC Seymour, and he is joining us from Hong Kong. It's good to see you there, Darius. What are the implications of this move? Uh, clearly, it is something that will allow a faster development of the Chinese private equity industry, something that uh, policymakers uh, in China have indicated for several months that they are really eager to achieve because it will uh, permit higher returns for investors, uh, especially institutional investors. And for the um, National Social Security Fund, it's really important for them to diversify, have higher yield on, th on their investments because they have long-term liabilities that um, are going to rise pretty fast. Mm -hmm. so, so private equity in China, it is still relatively young, as are most of their financial markets. Does this bring Chinese private equity more in line with what we see in more developed countries? Um, definitely so, although it is a small step. Uh, the private equity industry in China started several years ago, and last year we saw a major law passed in June that sort of codified the rules for, for uh, local private equity. Um, however, um, there are still restrictions uh, on uh, who and how may invest, uh, as well as uh, in terms of the size of the private equity funds that can be uh, started without an official permission from uh, regulators. So, so the move is fairly small. However, uh, the National Social Security Fund will be a relatively major investor, and if they do want to align the proportion of assets that they hold in private equity investments locally mm -hmm. with global standards, uh, then clearly they will put more cash in private equity funds going forward. So does that mean cash will be coming out of local equity and bond markets? Well, uh, to some degree, there, there is uh, a potential that uh, as the private equity industry uh, grows, um, investors such as the National Social Security Fund will move some of their holdings from the Shanghai stock market or government bonds into private equity. Uh, this is particularly encouraged by the fact that uh, the public equity markets have performed very poorly recently. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's natural for the Social Security Fund to try to diversify into investment vehicles that may have higher longer term returns and the track record for the experienced private equity funds in China is really good. Uh, but the Social Security Fund uh, sees a huge growth in their assets. So even if they allocate a higher proportion to private equity, still quite a bit will be left in the public equity markets. And what do you think of the timing of this move? I mean, inflation running about 9% in China, interest rates everywhere, uh, except for the U.S., seem to be moving towards going up. And isn't leverage a big part of most private equity funds? Um, well, um, of course, uh, it, it depends uh, how it is structured, but uh, I think in the case of China, um, the private equity funds will probably not borrow that aggressively. I don't think it would be encouraged by uh, policymakers. They will mostly rely simply on capital from institutional investors and the Social Security Fund, I don't think it will borrow to invest the money. They will just put uh, some of the funds that they have uh, so far allocated in other asset classes into the new private equity funds. Mm -hmm. But the timing itself is definitely related to the fact that as inflation uh, is moving up very fast and as the stock market is declining, um, the Social Security Fund faces pressure on returns because uh, their liabilities uh, will increase uh, it's difficult to achieve uh, successful rates of return from other asset classes, at least in the short term, uh, and therefore the move into private equity. Okay, point taken. Why do you think the Social Security Fund agreed to invest in these two funds in China as a limited partner? Isn't the usual practice in China to be very hands-on in management, very involved? Uh, that's true that so far in China, uh, investors in private equity funds um, did not um, sort of um, accept uh, a passive role of a limited partner. Uh, however, uh, the Social Security Fund is an institution that b belongs to the government in, in a way, and the government has recently passed this uh, law that uh, clearly defines the roles and the responsibilities of the general partner and the limited partners. So it's sort of in line with the 
policy of developing the market in line with that law that the uh, Social Security Fund accepts the role of the limited partner. Uh, and besides, um, it might also be that um, the private equity funds that they are investing in, the CDH investments uh, and uh, Honey Capital, m might have not accepted uh, a, a more uh, active role from, uh, from this investor. Thank you so much for joining us today, Darius. That was Darius Kowalczyk. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. From Chief, the Chief Investment Strategist from CFC Seymour, and he was joining us live from our studio over in Hong Kong.